Good morning, rap boy. Say, ah! Whoa. <laughs> that was very accommodating. Wow. Lili Nishma Simi Mirosi Rusmas Mordechai. We're live in the five towns from the Belsky home. Thank you, Mati and the Revitson, or Mrs. Yes. When I, somebody calls my wife the Revitson, she gets all. So, Mrs. Revitson. and Mr. Mati Belsky, we sit on your chairs and your father's chairs in the Mesmerdruz, and here we are sitting on your chairs in your house. It should be, you know what? We'll do the shir. Lili Nishmas. Simcha Bar David. Simcha Bar David. Then Abraham Moshe. Abraham Moshe. have an aliyah. We also, at these days, we do the shir, the schus, all those who are still kidnapped and the 5,000 injured, over 5,000, and all the families that are suffering. So they should all have an achama. I do want to forewarn parents that this is the, the beginning of the sugya is a little bit. Uh, there's a parental warning here. Um, before we go into the sugya, we'll do a couple of emails. My grandfather listened to the rough shi every day. I remember often walking through his kitchen to see him sitting in front of an open gemara with his phone propped up next to it playing the shi. I remember just as often not seeing him in his usual spot as I walked through hearing the shi playing from his bedroom. Too weak to sit with his gemara, but unwilling to let that cause him to miss the day. He loved learning. His conversation always revolved around it. I don't know how many people with his favorite safer, but somehow everyone, even more distant relatives, knew that it was his Surah Mar. The last memory I have of hearing my grandfather is two days before his Tira. One of his nephews, my first cousin, was removed. I come in from Eretz Yisrael, and Simcha came to visit briefly before going back. While I was there, sitting with my grandfather in the kitchen, I needed to go through. Mildly comfortable, I spent about 10 minutes just sitting at the top of the stairs. From there, I heard my grandfather tell all of his story. I heard him say dozens of times, but this was a fresh audience. The story is as follows. There was, Re- there was Rebbe teaching his class about Yivam Chalitza, he asked the class, okay, fine, it goes into the whole thing. I hope this will be continuous chus for him. I greatly appreciate the Rav's time. Thank you, one of Beryl Septimus's grandkids. When he was Nifter, the, this grandkid wrote in, and I read it, the email, that he asked that this grandkid should uh, sponsor a shear for him. He didn't know how to get on the computer, and the grandkid pushed it off. And then the, the grandfather was Nifter suddenly. And the grandkid felt very bad. So right after I, the, the Kfuro or the Shiva came and, and this, so here it is. Uh, I think it's there. Uh, it's the, the yard side. Good vacher belly. Hope everyone had a beautifully inspiring shops at the good convention. Sure, I'm in good company when I'm saying that I was very glad to see that Guda appreciates your Habatis Atari almost as much as our ever-growing MDY family does that they made you a highlight speaker. You confirm your story about the Chavz Chaim from yesterday's Shir. Please see Arsipro's biography of the Chazanish. You may also want, when I said the story, I said I did, I asked people... I asked the Rabbi Sinem in the audience if you ever heard it, and he said no, so I was a little skeptical. I remember reading it somewhere, Baruch Hashem, because I know that I read this book many times when I was younger, because the Chazanish is probably one of my favorite Dailim, you know, from recent years, because of his, just the way that he was undiscovered until he was in his 50s, and he wrote a, the famous Chazanish, and nobody knew who it was. It stands for his name, of Mishaya, but... Nobody knew who the author was. It was just a, it was a popular safer, and nobody knew who the author was until he came to Israel. And Yigdal Adar wanted him to wanted the, the the world to know who he was. So they it's a very interesting story. Anyway, so it's in this book. Wishing you a safe trip back home to Israel. May all the Klai Israel join you soon. Until then, wishing them the MDY family and all the Klai Israel a week full of brachas, lochi shuas, and chamas. Nassim Miller. So yes, Bezer Hashem. Tomorrow is my last day here in the tri-state area. I'm going to make my way to Israel tomorrow night. I still have to discuss when the shear is exactly because I think my flight is like seven o'clock. I have to be there, you know, to, it takes an hour and a half to get to Newark, you know, the whole. Okay, <laughs> so I have to figure it out. And I still have to prepare. A boy said, This is a beautiful story in Hebrew, but somebody, two people sent me this email. So I'd like to read this email. Look at this picture very carefully. What you see in the picture here is here, now it's on the screen, is a father learning with his son, the daf. This son, is a general in the army, and he got injured. He's blind right now. He had surgery on his eyes, on his eyes, and uh, the father and he was sad that he's missing the daf. So his father is reading to him, and you see him concentrating. You see his eyes are closed. So it's a very. Uh, th- this one was from Shmuley Kleiner, and this one was from the Burgers. Father and son daf yomi together was always the uplifting side. But what you see in this picture is far beyond an ordinary chavruta. Gabi Krieger. Is sitting in the court of the ophthalmology department in the Bellinson Medical Center and is reading the Gemara to his son, Major Golan Krieger. Why is he reading? Because Golan Krieger, Mefaked Pluga, company commander in the 46th Armored Regiment, was injured by an anti tank missile that hit his tank during the battles in Gaza. 
and is recovering after surgery on his eyes. From the day of Sukkot Torah, there were attacked. Many of us started to accumulate gaps in the daf. Yoyimi told me, and Matam Bruce, my Zgam Faket Pluga, insisted and insisted and insisted on trying to find time for the daf. Even when he just had a little free time at the end of the day in the tank, he opens the Gemara and studies. He keeps saying, we have to do two wars, one war in Gaza and a second war to continue on the daf Yoyimi. And don't give up on both fronts. The boys say, hear this. We are sitting here in America. We're not in the front in Gaza. We only have one thing that we can do. And that's to learn Torah and to daven, to do chesed and give them schosim. Uh, after I was injured, he replaced me in the position. and talked to his grandfather, a kitzer, a halga survivor. It's a whole long thing. A few words. Anyway. Turns out the Matan, Zgan, MP, finished Mesechus Kedusha in the nest that they bring Mesechus Baba Kama to Gaza ASAP. ASAP. His grandmother was deeply moved to hear that her grandson was also winning the battle in the Fiyomi front. Before Shlema, Major Golan Krieger, Golan Ben Gabriela, may you speedily return to learning Mesechus Baba Kama with your own eyes. Beautiful. All right. Mesechta. I did. I said my mother. Go back. So okay, I said my mother. I'm willing to, uh, even though I have a very weak memory, go back and you'll see. The Masechta for the unity, the Masechta is for the unity of Am Yisrael. Let's go. What do you got? Mm-mm. I do Dab Gemara. Dab Gemara, what do you want? Masechta for the unity of Am Yisrael. Parnas HaChodesh, Rufu Shleima, Deba Dvarya Basar, I never bet in my life. Not even once. Really? Never, never bet on money in my life. Deba, the, uh, Rufu Shleima for Deba Dvarya Basar, the mother of Gershon Ben Moshe. The Parnas HaChodesh, Rufu Shleima, Rufu Shleima, Rufu Shleima, Ben Rochel, and Yidin worldwide. Lili Nishmat, Chana, Bad Elimelech, Lili Nishmat, Mendel, Ben Penchus, Lili Nishmat, Zachary Ben Moshe, Lili Nishmat, Zachary Bas Yosef, and Parnas HaChodesh, Yosef Arkes, Lili Nishmat, Hendel Moshe David, the Art of the Month, sponsored. Yes, Yosef ben Chai Sarf, all this chosen that come from supporting Limud Hatoira. So, yesterday we did this Mishnah. We'll go over it briefly. But I have a question for the Oilam. Oh, I did say it. Thank you. Okay, so. No, usually I say I don't remember. But when I remember, I remember. It's, it's like I, I, rare. It's not me. It's like, I, 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 nice. Trying out my memory from two minutes ago. I have a, I have a question for the for the Olam. And I'd like everybody to participate, please. If a person, Rahman al texts and drives and hits a pedestrian and kills that pedestrian, what are they? I'll give you some options here. It could be something else. But what are they? An Oynas? A Mazid? Or a Shaygig? Anybody? Mazid. You all say Mazid? Ding dong. <laughs> Alright, check it out. American ah, Alright, check it out. You hear that? A Rebbe and Cheder. It's a Shoyge Karev Lamazid. It's a new new concept that we're going to be learning today. It's not Mazid. Mazid means, what do they call in America? Um, premeditated murder. It's not premeditated. This person didn't want to kill somebody. Wasn't there a story recently with a from girl yeah, that yeah, did? She's 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 it's not your volume. Now, but it's it's not a shy gig. You can't say, hey, it's not my fault. Yeah, it is your fault. You shouldn't be texting while you're driving. What is it? It's something in between a, a, a shy gig and a mazid. It's a shy gig car of a It's very close to a mazid. In fact, there's something called a shy gig car of lioness. There's a shy gig that is cl- not even a shy gig. It's closer to a lioness. Okay, we're going to get there. That's one thing. So just, I know that we showed this twice already, but just do me a favor, for my sake, I like this, so, let me see where it is. Here, check this out. <laughs> if you guys understand how much work goes into this. <laughs> well, maybe there's, we'll put some volume there. Hey! <laughs> That's great. No, okay. Great. And I explained yesterday, if you didn't see this year yesterday, this is just uh, the beginning. And Bezer Shem, we're going to be able to develop it to a point where we explain complicated sugyas and things like that. And you didn't say which was Shibi. 
Anyway, what happened there is two people had the right of way. They both have the right to walk into Jesus Rabbit, and therefore, when they hit each other, they are Potter, the guy that, that hits the, the glass. He's Potter. Why? He has a right to be there, just like the other guy has a right to be there. Ask the Gemara, we're in the Gemara. Daflamid Bays, Lave, Heart, the good heart of the. I'm not trying to, to do I'm saying the MS. The Belskis have great hearts. All those cheers, all the things, all the Nadavas over the years. If a person damages his own wife, with permission, obviously, but causes damage during relations. Even the Bishus Kavit Potter, since he had permission, just like the guy walking down the street, he's Potter. Now, if you look over here, there's an ice vav. Believe it or not, that's the halacha. The person owes his wife money. Why? He should have been more careful. Can't we prove it from our own Mishnah? That's literally what we have over here. They both have permission to be there. But, right? So, Lachari should be Potter. They both have Rishos, they're Potter. Omar Rava, Kaval Chaimer. Says Rava, no. Umar Yar, Shaza, Lirishus, and Nikhna, Shaza, Lirishus, and Nikhna. So, for that, we need the Pasuk over here. This is the famous Pasuk. A Shayab is Rayo Biyar. The person is going to come into a force with his friend, Lach Tevetim, to chop wood. Benit Chayyadi Bagarzin. And he takes a nice swing with an axe, lichroi so ace to, to chop the wood, vinoshala barzel, and the metal piece goes flying. I guess they had the same axes that we have today. There's a wooden handle and a metal piece, and you put like some, you know, like uh, matches in there or whatever. You make sure it's nice and tight, and it eventually it comes loose. Vinoshala barzel when I ate, and it finds his friend, and the friend dies from it. That's called a shaygig, and he has to run away. In order so that he could survive to live, because if not, what's going to happen? His relative could come and uh, take revenge. So, um, ooh, this is in the wrong place. Let me get to it. I hate when this happens. This is Beis Hashem. When I get back to Israel, we don't we don't have this issue. Let me here. Check this out. Uh, this is a little bit of a. This is a Yoshi. This is not a three D. This is more like a, I don't know what you call it. One D, two D. Yeah, I don't know. He's, he's very able. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> okay, it's it's not even rated. You don't see it. It's like it happened. Just the sound. Okay, fine. Great. So that that's what happened. So it says Rava Kavachaymer. Uma Yar Shazel Rishus and Nichnas Zel Rishus and Nichnas. Look at this. Sorry, they both have permission to be in this forest, but it, it's not owned by any individual. Nas Kimishin Nichnas Zel Rishus Chaver Vechayov. Nevertheless, he's he has to go to Gaulus. This one that goes into the other person's rushos, so to speak. Certainly, you should be chayyot. Says Gemara, What do we do with our mission? Says the Gemara, When it comes to a person walking with a beam and a person walking with a jug, they both have they're both equals. They're both participating, they're both walking, they're walking towards each other. You understand, in, in this particular case, in these different cases, but in this particular case, just think about what the Gemara says about Esther. Esther, what does that mean? She wasn't a participant at all. She just stood there and did, did his thing. Yes, it's, it's, it takes two people, but she wasn't a participant. But we're also talking about in a situation where only he was active, and therefore, he's doing the Maisa. Says the Gemara, why is she not considered a participant? When it comes to Arayas, the Torah says, Mufurish, you get cars, the, the ones who do, meaning even if a woman doesn't do, she, she's not really participating, she's there, still considered that she did something, Says Gemara, even in that case, they both benefit, they both have a no, and therefore just that alone causes her to get Misa. 
But over here, Iu Maisa Hudika Ovid. So over here, we're talking about injuring another person, and he's the one that took action. He's the one active, and therefore he's chayv. So that's the halacha. La halacha, a person would be chayv to his wife, you know, nezek. Let's call it nezek. He chayv for the nezek. Says the Gemara. Nusogya. Hayabal kaira. That's it. So from here and on, no more warnings. Hayabal kaira rishon. So I said yesterday, but I, I realized today, I want to, to me, it was very bothersome. What's the difference between a Balkhire and a Balkhire? So one is with a Aleph, one is with a Hay. But I realized this week, in this week's passage, because I got an Aliyah, and the guy was a Balkhire. I, I hope he doesn't listen this year. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why he's a Balkhire, not a Balkhire, he's, to me, he's just a, a log carrier. Why? Because... I got the Aliyah with the Katainti. And he took the beautiful Katainti and he did Katainti. I told him, I said, you ruined my day. <laughs> what kind of business? You're about Kaira. That's it. I'm going to start calling this guy from now on about Kaira. And in fact, my, the, my favorite about Kaira, um, Menachem Ateh from MDY, I love him dearly. But on purpose, he'll do the Revi on the Katainti just to get me aggravated. He knows that I, And that's it. Fine. Next. Huh? There is one day that's of course there's a day. Uh, but why do you have to be that guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah, you're a Yeah, I found the day. Uh, I found the sheet that says good day. I want, I'm such a, oh, no. Good You know, it's beautiful. I, I, I grabbed the hole. That it's supposed to be a V. I I saw the Koran or whatever. No, stop it. Be like everybody else. It's, no, it's probably seriously. Maisa Shahoya in our shul, and I'm, this is not something to, to be repeated, and don't tell anybody about this. It's, it's the camera. No, it's, uh, I feel bad that I did I, You know, I used to be Vild. This is a long time ago, where, you know, in shul, everybody screams, Ka'ayla. So a millisecond before the Bakari got there in Menachem Ateh, I scream out, <laughs> and all, everybody instead of screaming, Kale, Kale, they started laughing. It was, it's not good to do in Shul. I'm serious. Don't do it. So now you're the the guy with the beam. And you're in front. Oh, I was going to bring a whole beam and a thing. Okay, forget it. Next time. Do you have any toys with beams and barrels? No? Probably. Go, go look for it. No, no, no. <laughs> until, until you get it, we're going to be done. Orish Lakish. So we have the case in the Mishnah where the, the, the beam guy is going first and then he stops and the other guy knocks into him or he doesn't stop and the other guy goes too fast. It's tailgating. We call it tailgating today. So yeah, I have it over here. Fine. You have a beam. Here, let's do the Gishmak to the top. You have the beam walking first and the guy's behind it. If he goes too fast and knocks into him, obviously it's the, the guy that's tailgating's fault. If the beam guy stops short, and this guy bumps into him, so the beam is chayv. Says the Gemara, Orish Lagish, they paris b'shus harabim. There's two cases. Achas revutza v'achas ma'alechas. One of them is doing something illegal, unnatural, or I don't know if unnatural is the right word. Not the right, it's not the right thing in the, in the b'shus harabim. It's like a car parked in the right lane, in the middle of a, a very a six-lane highway. You don't park in the right lane, you go to the side, so one was literally sitting in the middle of Rosh Hashanah, and another animal is walking normally. If the walking one gives the sitting one a nice kick, that's the one we want to talk about. If the, the sitting one decides to stick out its leg and give it a good kick to the one that's coming next to it, and you could say that the reason why he did it, he wanted to protect himself, or herself, she's sitting on the floor, she sees another cow about, you know, pro, you know, trying to go over, so she gives a good kick. Chayeves. Yechayev. Chayeves. So we have, we have, we do have a picture here for it. So this one right over here, you can see the arrow pointing. There's one sitting on the ground, the other one steps over it and gives it a nice kick. Look, it looks, it's looking back, it's looking in anger. Did it on purpose. Potter. Potter, Why? Because this one on the on the floor is Mishana, it's doing something Bishinoi. So call Mishana Uba, Uba we will if you come and you do something different, 
after somebody else did something different, if you're an animal, you're potter. If you're a human being, you're chayv. This is the, the other way. The one on the floor gave the one trying to climb over it a nice kick. Chayv. Maybe there's a right. If the guy with the beam was first and the guy with the barrel was walking behind, the one with the barrel is walking too fast, bumped into the beam. Potter, obviously, we all relate to that. You're driving 75 miles an hour in the left lane. And of course, this is that old lady that likes to go 30 in the left lane. Why they go in the left lane? I have no idea. And you hit her. You're chayv. You went too fast. But if the person in the left lane makes a short stop, chayv. Okay, so again, in America, that might not be the, maybe the insurance companies don't go with that. But when you're walking with a beam and you're just driving, you shouldn't be sta- you shouldn't stop. Everybody's walking at a certain pace. You don't just stop. Chayv. Says Gemara Vacha, the Kibbutzah Bimalech is dummy. Over here, the one that's on the floor, Kibbutzah is dummy. Uktani Chayev. So the one, so over here, this guy gave, uh, gave the one that's on the floor, stopped, and hit the one that was crossing over. The one that's on the floor is like a parked car. We just said, if you park yourself, you're with a beam and you park, and somebody hits you, you're chayev. So this cow is like the parked car, and the one that stepped over it, and you hit it, you're chayev. Does anybody get the problem over here? Because when you're a parked car, you're not doing anything. You're just standing still. Somebody hits you. So the guy that stood still is chayev. He shouldn't be there. Now we're saying that the one that was parked, not only did the person not hit him, but the person that was parked opened up its door and flung it out and, and hit that person. It's a whole different story, right? The animal that's on the ground kicked that the, the, the car that's moving. That's a whole different story than a car that's parked that you're chayv if you hit it. Sorry, the car that's parked is chayv if somebody hits it. But over here, the car that's parked is also causing damage without it hitting. It's, 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 it's kicking. It's sending something out of the car. Says the Gemara, but this bro, see you, bio. You think you're helping? Let me start the let me say, Not only are you not helping, what you're doing is creating a question. Rabbi Israel Salanter, when he wanted to introduce the, the Muslim movement, so he was a tremendous Tamil Chacham, maybe the greatest Tamil Chacham of the generation. People know him as the, the Mr. the Rabbi Musr. He was a tremendous Tamil Chacham. There were a lot of people that were against Musr. So what they did is they sent a big Tamil Chacham to go fight him. And he would get up and give a whole pilpul in learning. And at the end, he'd, he'd stick in the Musr. So this uh, Tamil Chacham said, what you're saying is not true. Because I have a right from a different Gemara, like this and like that. So so Salanta said, no. What you bring me a raya, is, what you ask me a question, a contradiction, is exactly a raya to what I'm saying. Oh. And the guy tried again. He kept on asking contradictions, and Rabbi Israel Salanta would show him that the contradiction is actually a raya. He was playing with him. The next day, the guy comes, he realizes, okay, I'm not going to ask contradictions, I'm going to bring rayas. So the guy screams out, he goes, I have a beautiful raya for the, for the Roshiva. So Rabbi Salanta it's not a raya, it's a contradiction to what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So he said it again, he brought another raya. So the guy said, okay, that's it, I'm done with that. <laughs> Give me, get me another job. So that's what it says here. You bring me a raya. So what you're saying, it's not a raya. It's actually a contradiction. Now what? Again, is, it, is everybody following me? I'm saying weird words here. If you have a car that stops in the middle of a highway and another car hits it, the Gemara says the car that stopped on the highway is chayev. Raya from a cow that parked itself in the middle of Rosh Hashanah, and as another cow is passing by, it sticks out its leg and gives it a nice kick that the cow is chayev. They're not the same story. One, one is not doing anything, and he's chayiv, and the other one is doing something. So, of course, the mission is going to say you're chayiv, because the cow on the ground give, gave it a kick. Here, look at this picture. It didn't belong, and it kicked. So, of course, it's chayiv. But you can't bring a raya that if a car is parked and you hit it, that the car is chayiv. The car didn't do anything. Hold on. No, it was just sitting there, and another cow came, tripped over it, and, and banged its head on the floor, and then died. Okay, that's a different story. Says the Gemara, not only is it a, you see this Lashen? 
Vitisber Hossi, you buy you're helping me. Let me stand on the Messiah. Not only are you not helping me, I'll make sure I'm a cash, you bring me a cash. Time at the bottom. This case of a cow is because it gave a nice kick. But let's say it didn't kick the cow that was stepping over. But the cow that was stepping over tripped and fell. Potter. It would seem like it's Potter. The Mishnah, where, where the guy has a, a beam and he stops still, and a guy with a jug hit it, you say you're high, even though the beam didn't do anything, didn't kick. So it's a stereo. It's not a it's not a it's not a riot, it's a contradiction. It says the Gemara Maslisin, the Paschal Urchu Kishildo. The this beam is talking about that it, it, the guy spread it across the whole Rosh Hashanah. You can't get by. So and nevertheless, you're chayiv even without doing anything. Hacha kigon the rubber b'chad gisa. But over here with the cow, it's sitting all the way to the side. You buy a little segu, you buy the gisa. So I gave you enough room in the rishus sarabim to go by. Why do you go over me? So it's a tie on the cow. Ella save the masis misayel the rish lokish. You know what? We can bring a raya from the end of the mishnah. What if you reverse it? Now, the guy with the barrel is first. The guy with the kaira is walking behind him. If the guy with the beam is walking too fast and, and breaks it, he's chayv. You he can't go too quick and knock it. But if the guy with the barrel stops still and the beam guy hits him, what's that lacha? Chayv. I, the beam guy could go around. He has enough room. A chavis certainly can't stop the entire Rosh Hashanah. It's not as wide as the Rosh You want to tell me a, a large beam, a long beam, fine. But this is similar to the story you're telling me. You're telling me that the cow is in one part of the Rosh Hashanah and you could get around it. Okay. Over here also you could get around it. Nevertheless, even though you could get around it and he hits it, he's chayev. Uh, sorry, potter. Potter. He's potter. Why? Why is he potter? He could get around. Why is this guy? He goes, he hits him. It's not such a tiny oh, he's still, he, he, There's other lanes. Make a go around go around. Nevertheless, he potter. Says Gemara, Bahacha, the Kamalach is Kirutsadami. Bukhtani Potter. Right? So this so it's a good raya. Why? Because we say the same thing. This cow that shouldn't be there, even though it doesn't take up the whole Rosh Sarabim. And the other cow could go around. It says in our Mishnah, it's Potter, even though he has room to go around. He's not in to go around. He continues straight and damage that cow. Says Gemara Masis Nechiyuruche Kamazgi. Hacha Amarla. When it comes to a beam, the guy is walking. He's in the left lane, he's walking. Hacha Amarla, need this Lachushus, this Guya, Yelai, the Vuti be less Lachushusa. We had this far before in the Mesechta. Yes, you could go over me. If you're st- if you sit down in the middle of the Shusra, I'm allowed to step over you. But that doesn't mean that you're allowed to kick me while I'm stepping over you. That you don't have Rishos, and for that, you're going to be chayv. Says the Mahaligan Mishnah. Shnayim Shoyim Mahalchim Shusra Rabim. The Mishnah is basically saying the same halacha three times. Basically, if you run, and there's going to be a Shiloh when, when he's running, um, Erev Shabbos, not Erev Shabbos, but if you run, Echad Ratz Halach, all three cases of guys running. One is running and one is walking. I show you Shneim Ratz, two people walk, running. Bezigu Zezeh, where's the first one? Shneim Shoyim Malachim, sorry, I missed it. Shneim Shoyim Malachim, Shusha Rabbi. Two were walking. Echad Ratz Vechem Halach, I show you Shneim Ratz, Bezigu Zezeh, Shneim Peturim, okay, two cases here. There's a, a gear here, five. Bezigu Zezeh, and they damaged the guy running damaged. Potter <laughs> says Gemara, must this like Yisim Yudah? This doesn't go like Yisim Yudah. The sign Yisim Yudah, are you mad? Because Yisim Yudah says Rots Chayev Neshum Shuna. He says no, you're not allowed to run. Run running is different. It's, it's not 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 common practice to run on a sidewalk. You ever see somebody in Manhattan running? No, it's not. It's not. It's not how you do it. Well, my this is been a Shabbos. It's been a Shabbos. So Yisim Yudah says when you're running Erev Shabbos, late and right before Shabbos. Then you are potter. Why? Nei He has one exception to the rule. Erev Shabbos. 
says Rabbi Yochanan, and you see there's a test over it, means that's the halacha, that what? On Erev, only on Erev Shabbos you let it run. But on Tuesday, if you run, you're chayyib. As in Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan, did it really say that? Rabbi Yochanan, Allah, Kistan, Mishnah, the Allah is like the, the anonymous Mishnah. It says in the anonymous Mishnah, Echad Rats Vechem Ha'alach, Oishoy Shneim Rats in Pturim. Echad Rats Vechem Ha'alach, Oishoy Shneim Rats in Pturim. It says before Shneim Pturim, even on a Monday. It says in Gemara, you must say, Masnis of Erev Shabbos is Benesh Moshes. No. The Mishnah is also on Erev Shabbos. We didn't say anything about Erev Shabbos. How can you say it's talking about Erev Shabbos when the Mishnah doesn't talk about Erev Shabbos? Yeah. Because you have to be Medai. Why does it say two halachas? Say, if one guy is running, he's potter. If both are running, of course they're potter. That's a Kolchkin and a Kavachimer. If, if one guy is minding his own business, walking like a man two miles an hour down the street, and Samir Shogun is running like a crazy guy and hits him, and he's potter. So, of course, if two crazy guys are running, they're both jogging in opposite direction, they hit each other, then they're both, of course they're potter. So, why do you have to say second case? If in the case when one is walking, the guy that's running is potter, so certainly if two are running, he must say the reason why there's two cases is because we're talking about Erev During the weekday, Chayev, that's what the Mishnah is talking about. How do I know this? Because of this diok. Why does the Mishnah have to say two halachas? It's unbelievable. That's like next level, you have to think. I guess when they when Rebbe taught the Mishnah, he explained it to his Talmudim like that. Shneim Ratzim, Afil B'chal, Pturim. But if two people are running in the weekday, they're Pater. Amar Umay the Yisad, this is a Gishmak and Gemara here. You can learn a lot from this. Umay the Yisad, Erev Shavuz, Menashem, Shavu, Pater. Isi, and this is how we pass again. That is, he agrees that if you run, Erev Shabbos, you're potter. Why? What are you doing exactly? What's the permission? Why did Chacham say? This is like Nusach Sfar, right? I, don't, I know that Nusach Hashanah says, What does Nusach Sfar say in the uh, Chadayim? Boy Shabbos Kala Malkisa, next one. Barmila, and some say, Likra Shabbos Kala Malkisa. The first one is, let's go out and greet, like Rashi says, like a king. Even though the Gemara says, like a Kala, like a Chasin goes to the Kala, he's excited to meet his Kala. Kala Malkisa, the Kala who's a queen. King, queen. You're going to greet Shabbos. Barmila, and some say, Likra Shabbos Kala Malkisa. You say Shabbos Kalam Malkus. The Shabbos is a Kala. If Yanam is out there, if you get all dressed up, put on his talus or whatever it is, we call you Omar, Boi Kala, Boi Kala. Why Sfar says this way and Ashkenaz says this way, I don't know. But there's a certain halacha here. It says, I should have looked it up. Huh? I don't know. Any Sfardim here? But everybody that was in the Sfar. It's okay. <laughs> So I just want to point out something. We have to we have to talk about it for a second about Chavez. The most important yontif that we have is Shabbos. The most chomer yontif that we have is Shabbos. The, it's the highest madrega, the most gedusha, and it comes with the most severe punishment if you you mechal you mechal yom kippur you only get karis. Mechal Shabbos, he gets Skilo, which is the highest, the worst death. And the reason why it's the most, um, what's the word? Um, no. Uh, 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 the most neglected. The reason why it's the most neglected and not as appreciated. Uh, you get Shabbos, Shabbos. Uh, Sukkot and Pesach. Why? Because it happens every week. So what I'm suggesting to Dailam, obviously I'm not going to do it myself, but I'm telling Dailam to, <laughs> is that everybody should think upon themselves. And they come and tell me, <laughs> people came to me in the Shabbos and said, because you said this in the Suma, I do this and this and that. And like, I was saying to myself, well, Baruch Hashem, you do it. Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell the guy, make him feel bad, but listen, I get schusim, he does it. I, I'm just telling you what to do. And it doesn't mean that, Seriously, what people I should. Do as I said. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody think upon themselves something, whatever it is. When I moved there to Israel, I think upon myself something I wasn't doing at the time. That's 10 years ago. I 
without a, without any uh, excuses, without anything, say Dvar Torah at the meal. I never used to say Dvar Torah. Say, prepare something that takes time and who has time for it. So I prepared. And then about four years ago, when my son-in-law came to the family, as covet, I let him say it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what happened. <laughs> that was it. So, again. yeah, I have to start again, but you know how it is to start again. <laughs> I want to start the next cycle. Yeah, that's right. I'm coming now. Right. The Shabbos. That's right. That's why, that's why and of course, and of course, Nassan is going to say, you got to say a bar every Shabbos. You can say, if you have that, you can say this. Fine. He's here. He's listening. He's right. 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 He's I'll share with the island real quickly. So, Nachamal, my my thing, my idea is that everybody should take maybe maybe a halacha, learn Hilchah Shabbos. Not everybody learns Hilchah Shabbos. There's easy books now. Just say one halacha about Boyer, Muktza, this, that, something to, because Shabbos is the, the holiest yantam that we have. But uh, a beautiful thing, I, I, I didn't, if you notice, I didn't say any stories about, oh, this kibbutz was saved because they kept Shabbos. I, I'm keeping it very, very pyro, very. Achdos, not not to say oh, okay, you were Chal Shabbos. That's why the I don't want to go that route. But this guy in the Aguda, they showed a video of a kid, like 18, 19 year old, maybe he's twenty year old uh, kid, who went off to Derech, and he decided what happened. I forgot why, but he decided that he's going to keep he, the Rav spoke to him, going to keep one thing, and that is not to smoke, not to smoke. And his friends made fun of him. You Chal Shabbos and this and that. Kids are, they were supposed to go, and he loves going to, to the rave parties, and he works hard the whole week, and he, he likes to, to blow up some steam at the parties. He gave a whole thing. The bottom line is that he convinced his friends, they're all going to, to Nova, and he convinced his friends that he can't go because of the smoke and because of this and that. They should not go, and they should stay uh, this, and the, they go to Kiddush instead. I don't remember the details. I'm sorry. The bottom line is that... All his friends were saved. The kid broke down crying. His, his other friends that went all died. He said their name. This, so, And then after the whole video, it was very emotional because he was crying on the video and his father was talking. His father's like the head the Mankal of Mankal of Nebrak in the area. And uh, then the kid came out. He was there at the convention. And uh, he claims, this kid says, Shabbos, I was saved. And now I'm Shemir Shabbos completely. The whole, okay. Anyway, Zok the Mishnah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so thank you. The Turning the Daf, sponsored by Hanan Araba, Lila Nishmas Biyom Mayor Ben Zeev David, my holy nephew, son of Robert and Jen Early. And Lila Nishmas Biyom Mayor Ben Zeev David. Says the Elegim Shalam Vakea, which is also the mission sponsored by my Shekohen, Lishus Parnasa and Aliyah Bruchnius. I'm a Vakea Bershus Harabim, Vihizik Bershus Ayachet. So you have this guy, we're not going to show it again, but you have the guy chopping wood, and he's in a Rosh Hashanah in a public domain, and a piece of wood, or even the axe itself, when flying into a private property. And he, or he was in Rosh Hashanah, and it damaged Rosh Hashanah. So it's the reverse. He was in his own private backyard, and it slipped out of his hand and killed somebody in the street. Or he was in private property, and he went in private property, and Utsrichi, you need all three cases, says the Gemara. The e taught him if a camp should say Yachav is a Gushus Arabim. If it only say, it's a little bit out of order. If it only say, you should say Yachid into Rishus Arabim, Mishum, the Shrikh Arabim. There's a lot of people in Rishus Arabim. Al Bishus Arabim, the Shrikh Yachid, the Shrikh Arabim. When a guy is chopping wood in Rishus Arabim, so he thinks to himself, what's the worst case scenario? A piece of wood will go flying into this guy's backyard. Nobody's there. Well, he's probably at work. Emeloy, maybe he shouldn't be Chayim at all. Fine. He's a guy standing in Shusram. He has no right. Nobody has a right in a public thoroughfare to chop wood. So he started off on the wrong foot. But when he started in his backyard, he has all the right in the world to do it. And something happened, a shoyi happened. So maybe I'll think that he's part. No, he's chayim, he has to go to Galt. 
Very simple to rechusa, right? If it doesn't say, if it didn't say, the Rosh Hashayachad, the Rosh Hashayachad, I would think that it has two things going for it. Why should he think that if the handle goes flying, it's going to hurt somebody's neighbors? Neighbors never in the backyard. And he has all the right in the world to start chopping one in his backyard. He doesn't have to go to Gauls. You need all these cases. Says the Gemara. Ah. Okay, I was supposed to say this before. This is the this is the, the halach that we learned a couple of times of Kalam and Shana. If a, a cow sits down on the ground and does something, and then another cow comes and also does a shinoi potter. It's a complicated one. Fine. This we did already. Oh, this is an agar. This is interesting how it came out with the with the wording in there. But okay. The Seder. So if you look closely, it has our sugya. Tanar Abonan. Hanichnas lechanusoi shel nagar shaloi bershos. This is uh, Yoshi's doing. Fine. A guy comes in here. He comes into the carpenter's work. Uh, what do they call it? Workshop. 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 Okay. Thank you. Now the carpenter knows that he's there. He knows. It's funny how there's a little mezuzah in the wrong place behind the carpenter. Great. So he Making, sees, huh? He's a lot of AI here. <laughs> he, he didn't knock on the door. He just walks right in, but the guy sees him. And a piece of wood goes flying and hits him in the head and kills him. Potter. What is he, Potter? He's Potter from going to goals. But he's Chayev on damages. So if he didn't kill him, he's Chayev for damages. But if he had all the right to come in, he said, come in, Chayev. Then he's Chayev on the four things. These are the four things he's going to say, besides Boishas. He's Chayev for Nezik Tzai Ripu Sheves. He's Chayev for the pay in the medical of the lost income, but not for embarrassment. Why? Because embarrassment, you're only Chayev when? Skaven. Skaven. Who said that? <laughs> you brought West Hempstead here. That means what? So you're not gonna you're not gonna see Robbie Crohn? <laughs> Omar Rabbi Barchanina. This is what we call the first lashon. Lishna Lishna Kama. There's actually a chart. Let me see if I can find it real quickly. Oh. Is uh okay fine. I'm looking at like for the first time because it came in late. Let me show you real quickly if you want to see. All you're going to be looking at is the where it says Lishna Kama, and it goes down like the it's the center box, the center colored box. Okay, so basically, what's that? This one. Yeah, you guys, the center. I'm ta- also talking to a few other people that are going to be watching later, but. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I wasn't going to. All right, Chaya Barbad Varim says Rabbi Yosef Hanina. Now, Chaya Barbad Varim, sorry. Vim Nichas Bershos Chayov, my Chayov. On the second case, my Chayov. What is he chayav on the second case? That's what I explained a second ago. He's chayav the four things, not boishas. Who potter me gallus. And according to this, he's potter from going to gallus. Again, what happened? He's working in the shop. Guy knocks on the door. Come in. He comes in. He continues working. A piece of wood goes flying and kills him. Or hurts him really badly. Uh, but if he kills him, he doesn't have to go to Gulls. Why not? Why not, Rabbi? So why not? Isn't that called the Shaykh? So the Gemara says over here, he doesn't have to go to Gulls. It's not civil to a forest. They both have the same amount of permission to come in. But this guy came into his Rishos. So, yes, he had Rishos to come in, but he came into my domain. I'm the Balabas here. I, I'm not going to go to Gauls because of you. Amarava, Rava doesn't like this. So let's remember this. That what? 
that according to this, before we get to Rava, Rava says a different, uh, the exact opposite shot. But according to this, which is hard to understand a little bit, but I guess that's uh, that doesn't make sense. Hard a little bit. Okay, it's hard to understand, I guess. If somebody comes into your domain, he comes into your house, and you kill him by mistake, you don't go to Gullus. Okay. It makes no sense. If but in a forest where each one went in by themselves, not then it's as if you went into your friend's domain and he and you have to go to Gullus. If I allow him to come in, like culture now, I'm even worse off. I'm I'm more of a mazed, so to speak. I knew you were here. You're in my house, and I killed you by mistake. I should go to Gullus. El I shouldn't say I. He killed by mistake. El Amarava, my Potum says, Rava, you didn't, misunderstood. Potum means literally he doesn't go to Gullus because Gullus doesn't help him. He's so bad off that you can't even go to Gullus. A guy that kills somebody on purpose, does he go to Gullus? No. And there's no way to mean you can't kill him. Does he go to Gullus? No. Because Gullus is there to help people that did things by mistake. He didn't do it by mistake. This is called what? Oh. It's called Shoige Karav Lamezid. And Gullus doesn't help, says Rob. Okay. So that answers the question that we had before. If a person, I'm not a rub. Again, I'm just throwing this out there. I might be wrong, but something similar. Guy is texting and driving, not paying a lot of attention to the road, and you're in a vehicle that's a killing machine. People die every single day from it. So you might be something called shaggy carbon amazing. You didn't intend to kill, but you're you're not you're not amazing. Maybe. You're not a shaggy. Maybe. Now I have a question for the island. According to this. That the guy was very negligent. He's a carpenter, and he he told the guy to come into his shop, and he didn't stop working. And one of the tools hit the guy and killed him. And Rava says he doesn't go to Gullus. Now the Allah is a guy that why do you run to Gullus? One of the reasons he run to Gullus because otherwise the Gaila Adam, the relatives will come and avenge the, the the death, and they could kill him. You're allowed to kill him. So I'm asking the Ayala, what about in this case, where he's not allowed to go to Gullus? Gullus doesn't work for him. He stays at home. Could the Goyal Adam come and kill him? Yes. Everybody says no. no. Yes. Who says yes? He says yes, just to be different. And you're right. <laughs> <coughs> I also thought it's interesting. It, you're, you're right for saying no, because it makes a lot of sense, but that's not Allah. What? Right. It, it, he should have some protection. But unfortunately, the Allah says that the Goyal Adam could come and take care of him. Says the Gemara. What's the problem? Hoysev learned to Achaz We're talking about a Bezdan. This is giving someone Malchus. And every human being goes through a medical before they get Malchus. You're supposed to get 39 Malchus, but if a person is really old and can't sustain the 39. So the Bezdan will look at it and take his heart and this and that. Okay, 10. Comes this guy and gives him 11. And he dies on the 11th one. Or... He gives him 40 instead of 39, and he dies on, on number 40. The Allah is, Hariz Goyl al Yodai. The guy giving the Malchus has to go to Golos. He killed him by mistake. As the Gemara of Achad, the Shoyi Kurv, the Mazdu, the Boy, as we got died to the Maisi, in Shibichad Ritzua, he is a bad guy. It's not, oh, he's a big Shoyi. He should have counted well, and he should have known that that extra one is going to kill him. We have a case of Shoyi Kurv, the Mazd, where the guy does go to Golos. That's not like what we said, that you don't go to Gauls on Chagi Karvel Amaz. Or He made a mistake. It's not, he, he didn't, not that he gave him extra, he didn't know he was going to die. The shot is that he gave him extra because he, he miscounted. He didn't count well. He thought that happens all the time, right? You count to 40, but you get mixed up somewhere. You, 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 you take a text in the middle. Chagi in the counting. Tavachle Rava Bissandolik. So Rava, the stoop shot, and I thought the shot is, and I like that shot better. Rashi brings it that he he kicked him under the table. You know, he kicked the shoe. <laughs> like um, it happens all the time, especially when I was a kid. When my mother would uh, ask the guest if they want extra dessert, and then 
And all of a sudden, like one of my siblings is, Ma, why do you kick me? <laughs> like, like she only had a little bit left and she didn't want, you know, the, the guests to feel bad or whatever. Okay. So he kicked him on the table. What do you mean? The guy giving the Malchus is not counting. He's just hitting. But Tanya, it says before, the biggest die, and he's the one that reads all these psukim. Let's see if I have the psukim here. You read certain psukim, these are not all the psukim, some of the psukim. There's certain psukim that has the, before the whole, the whole process, the dayan comes and says, look, you didn't listen to Hashem, da, da, da. here, now we're going to hit you. One guy's there, his job is to count. Makes sense. You don't want the guy to do two jobs, hit and count, that's when you get mixed up. The third one says, hit him. Okay, yes, there's a guy counting, but I think it's incredible. The guy hitting is also responsible. And that's why he's a shaggy. Not a car of Lamezim. There's a guy counting. His job is to count. But the person hitting shouldn't say, oh, I don't have to, I don't have to count. He's counting for me. You're talking about life and death here. One extra... What is your whap or zap or what, what do you call it? Yeah. Whip. Lash. Lash. Thank you. Lash. One extra one is going to kill him. So you need to count yourself also. Don't rely on that other guy. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and that's a tie on him to the point where he has to go to Golos. Mesve. This guy's playing Russian roulette. He takes a, a, a brick and throws it into 13th Avenue. Either he's going to kill somebody or not kill somebody. Play a game. And it kills somebody. You go to Golos. That's not such a shaygeng. This is almost amazing. Yeah, you didn't try to kill Ruvain because you had no idea the Ruvain was there. You just threw it off the roof. He should have thought that for a second there's a lot of people there and it's gonna, it might kill somebody. So here again, we have a case that guy goes to Golos, even on a shaygeng, carve the Mazin. So this is hard to understand. We need a good shot here. It's not talking about a guy throwing a stone. It's talking about a guy that is breaking his wall. So it's not so much into the Rishasarab. He's doing it more into his own you know, backyard or whatever. And a stone goes and hits in Rishasarab. That's why he goes to Gulls. So you should make sure that nothing can happen. You know that when you break walls, stones go flying in different directions. No reason to believe there's somebody there. It's at night. But I nami boy lay you should check. Besides his class of Yom Lashba. He's doing it into a, a, a pile of, of, of waste and garbage or garbage dump. Hi Ashba Yikdam. Either Shikha Rabim. Mazidu. So what's going on here? What type of garbage dump? If it's a per there's a lot of people there that you know they go, they use it as a restroom, or whatever. So then again, you're carved amazing, not amazing. Carved amazing. Me loy shikhi rabim if nobody's there on a soup. Why should he think there's somebody there? All right, Papa. Okay, so it's in between. It's special. That's where people use it at night. Nobody uses it to relieve themselves during the day. But someone once in a while, no, I shouldn't say anybody. Once in a while, somebody there's an emergency. Somebody uses it. And he should know that. is not considered Because nobody uses it. But it, don't play a big tzad because you know that at least two, three times a day somebody goes through there. I don't know exactly what the shear is, but the Gemara is just saying it's one of those in between. So again, we had a Brisa before with two cases. What were the two cases? The two cases were you have a carpenter shop. And the first case is the guy went in there without permission. He didn't knock on the door. He walked in and the carpenter picks up his head for a second. He sees a guy standing there. He knew he's there, but he didn't give him a to come in. And he died, Potter. The second case is that he gave him a to come in. So, on that, Rabbi Yisrael Chanina said, Chai Barba Dvarim, a whole thing, says the Gemara, no, Rapapa says this was on the ratio. Now we're on the last row, vertical row, all the way to the left. Now what? This is the ratio. He went into the carpenter's Shop without permission. And he died. However, in this case, you're chayiv, you still chayiv to pay the four things. According to the Lishna Kama, you're not chayiv to pay the four things. Right? If you look in, this, in the center column, 
in green, it says Potter Medal Varn. According to this, Chayav Medal, who Potter Megalos, and he's Potter from going to Golos. Now, remember what Rav said. Rav said, on the, no, at the end he said Potter Megalos means he cannot. But over here, Potter Megalos doesn't have to go to Golos. Man, the master law is safer. Kolch can erase. So now, now we're not going to to Rav. Remember, Rav said, oh, it's also to go to Golos. In other words, Golos doesn't even help this guy. So. In, we're going according to the sheet that says in the Seifa, in the, like in the beginning of the Gemara, that when it says you put it from Golis, it means literally you don't go to Golis. Not that you Golis is not going to help you. You're a good guy. You don't need Golis. Right? There's, we started off the sugi like that. Now what? You tell a carbon that tells a guy, come in. He knocks on the door, come in. He comes inside. So he has permission to be there. And then he kills him by mistake. He's potter from Golis. Why? Because he was in his dining room. He was in his shop. When he comes in the shop, you don't have to go to Gauls. Rav says that doesn't make any sense. Not only do you, do you not go to Gauls, you can't go to Gauls. It's not even going to help you. You're big Russia. It's showing terrible amazing. No, we're not going in that shop. So in Mela, if that's the case, you hear this? If a guy comes in with permission into your shop and you kill him by mistake and it's nothing, you don't even have to go to Gauls. So certainly when he doesn't have permission to come into your shop, he just walked into your shop and you kill him. Of course you don't have to go to Golos. That's the ratio. Man, the master law safe. A coach can ratio. Man, the master law ratio. But whoever says that you don't have to go you don't have to go to Golos because he didn't have rishos to come into your shop. Ava safe, but in the safe where he, he knocked, he was polite and he walked in. You should have turned off your machines. Keeping the rishos chayv Golos. Since it, since it was rishos, he chayv Golos. As Gemara, we chayv Golos. Why why should we chayv Golos? But Tanya. What time is it? Oh, it's getting very late. Let's see. Where's the Napoch guy? Here's the Napoch. Oh, Napoch. Um, you go into a, what do they call it in English? Blacksmith. Blacksmith. And he has some uh, sparks flying. He died from it. Some kids, a piece of metal goes flying out and he dies. Potter. Vafilu says, Vafilu Nicholas Birushos. He's potter from Galos. Oh, my skin on. Beshulia, Beshvalia, whatever you want to call it. The kids are an apprentice. The Napachi. He's the apprentice. He's learning. So because he was, he's supposed to be there, you don't, you don't go to Galos. Ask Gemara, Shulia, the Napachi, the Menikta, like, what? Just because he's an apprentice, he's allowed to die? You're allowed to kill him? Because the, 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 the master uh, uh, blacksmith told him to leave and he didn't leave. What if you tell somebody to leave and he doesn't leave, you're allowed to kill him? Because yeah. he thought he went out. So then why do you have to say he's an apprentice? If he didn't know that he left, he thought he left and he didn't. So just say he's not an apprentice. Says, A regular person, you tell him to leave. No, no. Sometimes he leaves, sometimes he doesn't. He doesn't have any derecherits for him. But this guy has special uh, respect for his, his teacher. And therefore, when he told him to leave, he thought he left, but he didn't. And therefore, he doesn't go to Golos. If he kills him, Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day. Mishkar for coming. And uh, tomorrow, I have no idea. we got to speak to, to Nisanel. Oh, let's do some Tehillim. We'll do an easy one for Doilo. Shira Malois, Mimama. I can we'll say it all together. And B'Kavarak Doilo, for all those who need it, we're in the middle of a war. The Chayilim need it. The, all the injured need it. And the Shvuyim need it. Now that we heard that they don't even feed them and they whip them and hurt them and branded them with fire with the exhaust of a motorcycle to little kids. Imagine. <laughs> Hashtag, I love his man, Kareem, and he's my own day. Shloya, Shloya.